Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're working on the BMI calculator, and if you've been watching my wind chill calculator video, you'll notice that um, I did a lot of changes. One of the things I want to go over, and uh, you're going to see already this code looks a little different from the last video. Um, honestly, I've been working with my classes, and so I've been messing around with this, that, the other thing. And um, what I want to talk about is uh, the idea of implementing a model class in this Android Studio project. And the idea behind it is I'm wanting to support a model view controller uh, structure for my program, which is uh, really one of the more popular ways of developing apps, in particular web apps, and in this case, mobile apps. Um, and Android Studio is already supporting it. And the way they support it is uh, currently is through, you've got your views, which are in the resource file. If you go to, for example, content main, um, you can see the code that's there, and you can preview it. Um, the view is what the user is going to interact with. So that's part of this. It's going to display the data for us to see and work with in a way that users can understand and deal with. So that's the view, and you notice in uh, Android Studio, it's XML files. So there's another part, which is called the controller. Um, but you kind of have to understand the model as well. So the idea of a model is the model is what deals with the data. Okay, so that could be everything from just a simple app like we're going to do, where we're just going to double check to make sure the data is accurate, is within our ranges to be able to, you know, check the form and make sure that we have the right data um, and we test it out, we calculate it correctly, etc. So that's going to be the model, but in more uh, advanced programs, more developed programs, the model is going to do things like possibly uh, check with the database, um, put out a request to get information from a database or to change information on a database. Um, it might also deal with storing data on the local phone, local storage. And uh, so anything that has to do with the data and um, as far as uh, how do we represent it, is it valid data or not? And not only that, but business logic. All of that goes into the model. And right here, you're seeing this if, else, if, else. We're talking logic here. And so this logic really should be dealt with it with its own class. And so we're going to kind of divide it up a little bit. And uh, we're going to really just overhaul this here. And I've done some rethinking about how we want to do our validation. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a separate class that's part of this Android project. And we're just going to title it model because that's what it's going to do. So I'm going to right click on my folder that has the uh, Java file main activity. I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call this model with a capital M. Whenever you create a new class in Java, always start with a capital letter. So create a model. There it is. We're going to zoom in. Okay, so there's our class for the model. And the first thing we want to do is some form validation. Okay, and so with the BMI, we've got several different forms, uh, entries. And uh, when we look back at the content main, if we look here, we've got these input boxes. So there are some things here that we need to deal with. For example, feet. We need to make sure that feet and pounds for sure are not empty. We cannot calculate BMI with the, at least that. Inches we can deal with. If uh, they don't enter anything, we can just set it to zero. Um, so that's a slightly different behavior. So we need to deal with that. And then, of course, feet. Uh, we know that you know uh, no one's really going to be taller than possibly nine feet. I mean, we can set the rules to be different. Uh, weight in pounds. We're going to use our BMI calculator chart to figure out what is the proper uh, range of values under pounds. So we're going to do all that. The first thing we want to do is make sure none of these fields are empty. So our first method, uh, we're going to call it is empty. So let's go ahead and code that in our model. This is going to be a method. It's part of our class. Uh, it is a static method. And what a static method means is it's something that the model is able to do. The model is going to be doing our validation. So this is going to be a static method. Um, if we don't create the static method, we'd have to create little model objects. And don't worry about that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, object-oriented programming, um, look it up. So anyway, we're going to make this static. So it's what the model does. Um, in this one, it's going to return a true or a false Boolean. I'm going to check to see if it's empty. Okay. If it's empty, we want to return a true. If it is not empty, we're going to return a false. 
And anytime you create a method that gives it uh, a return value here, could be Boolean, could be int, could be void. Uh, but if there's a value here like Boolean int or string, you need to return a value. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to send it a field. And um, in this particular one, uh, we are going to check the, uh, it's an edit text field. We're just going to give it a field. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, check to see if it's empty or not. We did that already once, so let's do it again. It's an if statement, if field dot get text dot uh, length is equal to zero. Okay, that means there is nothing inside of our get text. The length means how many characters are present. If that is true, we're going to return uh, true, right? In this case, it is empty. And then otherwise else, we're going to return false. Now I could do it this way, return false like so. I, I in particular don't like to do that. I like to actually wrap it inside of curly brackets in case I want to do something else. Hint, hint, I will a little bit later. But for now, let's just test this out, see if it's working okay. So this is how you would test this uh, field. We go to the main activity. We already did this uh, check here, right? So instead of this, watch what I do. I'm going to write model dot. Right away, it says, ah, we have this is empty. And so we're just going to do edit feet. And um, if it's empty, we're going to set the error. And then we're going to do, uh, we can also do the same thing. You can do this on all of these. And not only edit feet, we could do this for um, edit pounds. Remember I said I don't care if the inches are or not. And then it's edit pounds, set error. There we go. So let's go ahead and test it out. Here we go. Let's try to calculate BMI. Aha, please enter a number. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a number. Click over here. Please enter a number. There we go. OK, so we're on our way. Let's do our next one. So that is empty. Another thing we're going to try to do is check to see if something is within range or not. Um, so what values could it be? So in order to do that, we're going to create a couple of variables up here. And these variables are going to just be variables used by the model. So we're going to make these private, which means no other class can actually view uh, or access these. And this is just, if you don't know whether to make it private or public, make it private. And then afterwards, if you need to change it, change it. Now, this is going to be part of the model as well. So we're going to put, uh, it's a static as well. So we're going to say private static int. And this is going to be lower... Um, and then I think we said that was feet was the first one we did. Uh, lower feet range. And of course, let's just say the lower range is uh, three, for example. And we can change that around. I think that's what we did before. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Private static int upper feet range. And let's just make that nine. So you can be up to 9 feet tall, 12 inches, whatever. Uh, if we find someone that's a little taller, we can go in and change that code to make it 10 or 11, whatever. But we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then, so we've done it for feet. So, and we can do it for all the other ones. But let's just go ahead and write this method. And it's also static. And we're going to say, it's also going to be Boolean. Do this a little bit. Is in range. Now, one of the things we're going to do about this particular method is we're going to make it so it works on any field that has a range we want to deal with. So we just check is in range. We're going to want to get the number data, okay? Whatever that's going to be. So that could be feet, could be pounds, could be inches if we want. And then uh, we're going to just put another int lower and another int upper, meaning lower range, upper range. Is it within range? In the context of this method called is in range, I would hope that lower and upper makes sense 
It's Boolean, so it will return a true or a false. And we're just going to do another check. If, and then we're going to put data is um, greater than or equal to lower. Okay, it needs to at least be greater than or equal to lower, but it also must be less than or equal to upper. Now, if you didn't know whether to do the and or or, just think through logically speaking. Let's say um, the person is 12, we, person enters 12 for feet, okay? Uh, 12 is greater than or equal to the lower range, which is three, but it is not equal to, it's not less than or equal to the upper range. So we want it to, it has to match both of those, so we use the and. If either one of those could have been true, we would have done it as or, not the case here. Now, we're just going to return true or false, or now we're going to just do return uh, fall, uh, no, I'm sorry, return true. Else, return false. What you need to know, is it in range or is it in range? And uh, there we have it. And uh, we can test this one out as well. So let's go back to our main activity. Um, and then we can, I'm just going to try it slightly different. I'm going to do another if. And then we're just going to try it on one. Uh, is in range. Okay, so we can run this without even using the feet, but let's just go ahead. Um, actually, we have to do it as a number. I'm just going to do it as a number. Let's say, guess a number between 1 and 100. So I'm going to put 50, and I'm going to put 1, and then I put 100. Okay, so now we're going to check to see is 50 within range. And then we're just going to do a results plus equals. And then we'll just put on here, 50 is within 1 and 100, else results ah, plus equals 50 is not within 1 and 100, like so. Let's test that out. Uh, we have another else if we'll get rid of that. Ah, there we go. Okay, not worried about all of that just yet. We're just testing out the one that we want. Let's see what happens. All right, let's test it out. We're just going to click. Uh, 50 is within 1 in 100. You see how it's there? And then let's do the next one. Let's do negative 50. And let's add, ah, go inside of here, negative. Let's zoom in on this code so you see a nice big, this is our test code. And let's run that again. Let's test this out. Negative 50 is not within 1 in 100. So we know that the uh, is in range is working. So what I want to do is just end with looking at that model code. So two. Um, we have two private static variables. Uh, these are called attributes, okay, or fields. And then we have two static uh, methods. One checks whether it's empty, one whether it's in range. And on our next video, we're going to take a look at um, how to take these and the other concepts we've done and create um, a... Uh, a series of methods to check the full validity. Do we match in each area? So we're going to call on is empty. We're going to call on is range. We're going to use those to find out and then display results so that we know if there's an error or not. So stay tuned for that.